Hello everyone, this is not the intro, this is actually me apologizing because my recording mic went out without me noticing because when it went out, it automatically switched to my laptop mic and started picking that up. So I, that is why I sound all echoey during this episode. So I just want to apologize ahead of time for that. It it sounds bad, but the episode was still a load of fun. Uh, enjoy Harley Quinn. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and Putin. Welcome to Go Watch a Movie, episode 122. I'm Kelvin. And I'm Robert. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, today, we are hitting the controversial yet celebrated yet, you know, there's a lot of things to say about this film right now. Um, Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey, or... Birds of Prey, the fantabulous emancipation of Harley Quinn. Not sure what to call it anymore. We're going to go with Birds of Prey for now. <laughs> but before we get to that, a little bit of entertainment news. The Oscars were last weekend. Did you catch the Oscars, sir? I, I did not. Uh, I'm going to go over the big, big winners. Not everything, of course. Uh, first and foremost, I'll get this one out of the way. Best supporting actor uh, for that was Joe Pesci, The Irishman, Al Pacino, The Irishman, Anthony Hopkins, The Two Popes, Tom Hanks, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, which I don't understand that. He seems like he would have been leading man in that, but mm-hmm. for best supporting. And the winner! And still, best supporting actor of the year, <laughs> Brad Pitt for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Well, he can't, can't be stopped. <laughs> I can't. I can't argue with him. Can't argue with it. He's he's winning. <sighs> he's got Man. tiger. He's got tiger blood. He does. A fucking wizard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, best actress: Charlize Theron, Bombshell. Uh, so is a Rona, Little Women. Scarlett Johansson, Marriage, marriage Story, uh, Charlotte Evero, Harriet, winner, Renee Zellweger for Judy. Um, go ahead and skip up the best director, well, best actor, I have to say that. Uh, I'm not going to list all of them because everyone knew it was coming. Joaquin Phoenix for The Joker. Uh, yeah, that's him and now, him and Heath Ledger, two Joker victories. I think the uh, Academy has an affinity for Jokers now. <laughs> mm-hmm. I guess I can't say that because Leto didn't get yeah, it. Yeah, he just <laughs> didn't quite make it, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, best director. Uh, it was Quentin Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Sam Mendes for 1917, Todd Phillips for Joker, Martin Scorsese for The Ir- Irishman. Huge names there, but the winner, Bong Joon-ho for Parasite. Right on. And pardon me if I uh, messed that name up. Mm -hmm. Um, And Best Picture, the one we've all been waiting for, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Marriage Story, Little Woman, Joker, Jojo Rabbit, Irisman, Ford vs. Ferrari, 1917. You would have thought one of those. Well, you know, those movies are full of stars we all love, but fuck no, Parasite, Best Picture. Holy crap. Best Director and Best Picture. Congratulations to those fine people. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um... Yeah, that was the Oscars. Uh, I'm pretty sure it shocked a lot of people. A lot of people were upset about a foreign film winning ours, but I say <laughs> to those people, <laughs> uh, a good movie is a good movie. Yeah. Wow. Um, let's see what else we got here. Turn Hooch. You a film of that? A fan of that film? I remember that. Yeah. Uh, go Tom Hanks doing his his thing back in the day. Well, it's thing. Remade, of course, because that's the era we're in. <laughs> um, Josh Peck of Drake and Josh has been uh, set to star in Turner and Hooch. It's a hour-long series remake of the, as I said, Tom Hanks-led film back in 1989 that was put out. And that's 
be on Disney Plus. What do you think? Were you a fan of Drake and Josh? <laughs> um, I, you know, I don't even remember if I've seen that or not. I probably, if I saw it, I would recognize it if I ever have, but I don't. It doesn't bring. It doesn't ring a bell. But as far, but as far as the show, like, yeah, not really. I'm going to rush to watch that. I mean, I think if you're a dog lover, maybe you might want to see it. Or I don't know. I don't know. Gonna compute to this new era, like, are, like old fans of the movie going to come back and watch it? Or I don't think so. I don't know. I think they're looking for new fans. They got to be because I don't know. I don't know what they're doing there. But maybe it's going to be genius, and it's, I just can't see it. I don't want to see it. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's. <laughs> I mean, I like dogs just as much as the next person, but man, I don't, I just don't want to watch. I mean, since my my years as a small boy watching Lassie, I think that pretty much did it for me. Lassie! <laughs> Lassie! <laughs> um, that will bring us over to this one. I'm excited for, I'm happy for, The Hunt is Back On. Uh, the Hunt movie that was supposed to come out like six months ago, but mm-hmm. because... It was going to be released the weekend after a uh, mass school shooting. They um, made a decision to remove it from theaters. They pulled every, or not even put it in theaters, apologies. They removed everything, all the ads for it, all the posters for it, took it down and shelved it. Well, it's finally coming out, finally has got a release date. Um, March the 13th, Friday, March the 13th. Ooh, that's a unlucky day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they accompanied it with a new trailer and everything. I'm excited about that because that was one we were looking forward to. Yeah, I am looking forward to that, and I'm glad it's going to be there. Yeah, glad it's actually coming out now. Um, the people put out some statements about the uh, Boom House did about uh, how they felt about pulling it. They said they understood. They just thought there were some uh, finger waggers who were behind the whole thing, and they, they wouldn't have caved but they, they get it. They want, don't want to point blame at anybody or anything. They make sure to mention that. So, yeah, but we get it. So that's, that's I think that's the most important thing here is the fact that we get it. Um, And this one, the theme of today, Birds of Prey, as I made fun of and post fun at in the opening there. Have you heard about this, the title of this movie being switched, switched around and changed? No, I have not. So, yeah. Uh, after a less than stellar opening weekend, yes, it's getting rave reviews, but over the weekend, it only made about 80 worldwide, 80 million worldwide, which for a blockbuster comic book, comic book movie with a headlining character as large as Holly Carly Quinn is not very good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And they had a budget of about ninety-seven point one million, so they didn't even make their—they almost did their opening uh, money back. But someone over there at that wonderful company uh, thought it would be a good idea to change the name at some theaters. Some theaters started listing the movie as Harley Quinn: Birds of Prey, as opposed to Birds of Prey. And the fantabulous emancipation of the one Harley Quinn. Was it, was, uh, it be, was it because they used the word emancipation and they people were a little iffy about it? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I wish it was that. Okay. <laughs> they, were, they were hoping putting her name up front. Uh, okay. So, gotcha. yeah. Um, which will take us to Let's Discuss the Show Pits. Mm-hmm. Um... You think that's a good idea? The, I can't. The last, the last movie I remember switching its name kind of oddly, uh, and I can't remember if it was before it came out or after. I think it's when it went to DVD. DVD was uh, uh, the day after tomorrow, or yeah, uh, it was like Live, Die, Repeat, or something like that. And mm-hmm. then the Tom Hanks time travel movie, and then it became. Day after tomorrow, I think it's the. Did you say Tom Hanks? I mean Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Wow, that was, <laughs> Tom, was very good. Tom Hanks should Tom Hanks should not have been in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, but yeah. So and I and I don't think that was was because of its failure because that movie actually did quite well. But you think if a movie's hurting, like rushing out to. <laughs> Change it. Like everyone knows already that the movie is about Harley Quinn. Yeah, that's like putting her name out front now is a you know 
it doesn't seem, I don't know. What do you think? I feel, I feel like that was a, I don't want to say a dumb move, but that's the first <laughs> thing that pops into my head. Like that feels like a dumb move. I mean, I mean, when we get into the movie, it's not just about Harley Quinn. No. It's actually about all these other people as well. So yes. they have just as much going on in the movie as as she does. I mean, she it kind of it stuff. feels yeah. It, it she was not the like I don't feel like she was the main character, I guess, but she wasn't the focused. I think it, yeah. I, I think they spread it out pretty pretty evenly, and it's mm-hmm. just like the last movie. We're not even though they're not. I guess they are related. Yeah. The last, you mean. So Suicide Squad, it wasn't just about her either. You can't say Harley Quinn Suicide Squad. You, you just, because, <laughs> because, she just because she may be the most popular person in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> Which yeah. Which I think I she was. But <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I don't. yeah, I I don't think it was the right move. I don't think uh and, and not all theaters are doing it. There's a select few the AMCs or have changed the name on the card and a few others. Um I don't know if they like spread it out regionally or what, but <laughs> I think they're scram- I think they're scrambling to try to get some of that money that they feel well they guess they did lost. They'll probably make it back in, in other sales like DVD yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But I think they're just scrambling to try to make some money and they're trying to ride the Harley Quinn thing because that's the most popular, you know, one out of the bunch. So Do you think they should have done that to begin with? If they were gonna do it, they should have done it to begin with and they should they should they should have stuck with their decision and let it ride. Yeah. because uh, it, it just I think it stains stains the film when you do that. Like, yeah, it makes yeah, it makes you think something's up with it. Like, it's not as good as it's supposed to be, or or something. You know, it's like, well, why are they changing the name? What's wrong with it? Or they make maybe I don't, I don't think there's going to be any like false contra- controversy with it. No, like, it just seems kind of like it seems like an unnecessary move. It's a bit wishy washy, uh, and it's it's like well, you, you came up with this uh, very long name to begin. <laughs> I personally wouldn't have went with and the and fantabulous emancipation of the one of one Harley Quinn to begin with. Mm. Um, but but uh, I get you want to mention her in some way, but hell, the, the this movie kind of echoes the current um, Harley Quinn show that's on the DC Universe network. Um, she's she's broken up with the Joker. She's out on her own. She's doing her own thing. It's very uh, X, uh, not X rated, rated R. <laughs> uh, like, you know, they they swear and all that stuff and all. And so, um, and it's just called Harley Quinn, you know. <laughs> but she uh-huh. has team ups on it as well. So if they wanted to go that route, they should just went that route. I don't I don't know. I just <laughs> what do you say to that? Um, but yeah. That, <laughs> I guess <laughs> what's done is done. You know, it's out now. People showed up who were going to show up. And once you did, do you think I, I saw a lot of people saying this is the direction DC needs to go. Uh, they, they love the style of this. Um, we can don't go too far. We get more to it when, uh, when we talk about the movie itself, but what do you think? Do you think this this format, this uh, rated R format, helped them or hurt them in this particular instance? Um, I think the rated R. Well, you're gonna give you're gonna put more people in the seats if you go PG thirteen. That's just a fact. Because I've been to Comic Cons and most of the Harley Quinns I see, and there's a shit ton of them, are you know little girls who mm-hmm. couldn't go see this movie, right? So, so yeah, I think you're gonna put. I mean, it's it's a decision you have to make. It's what you want. You're gonna go with your art and be like, I want this to be as as uh, genuine to the the subject matter, or are you going to go with uh, your your pocketbook and say I'm gonna put people in the seats? Yeah, it depends on which one you want to do, and we'll know it because you're gonna rate it one way or the other, and we're gonna know exactly what you're doing if you rate yeah. it PG thirteen. That's true. It's not like you can hide it. All right, that will bring us to trailers. You first or me, sir? Um, after you, sir. All right. Well, the one I'm going to do is a wee bit controversial. Oh. Um. <sighs> I'm a, I don't know how I want to do this, but but because this gentleman has done 
his whole career after the 80s basically has been publicity stunts. Um, but this is a very hard and real subject. And I don't want to uh, belittle him at all. But Corey Feldman, you familiar? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, he has a documentary coming out called My Truth, The Rape of Two Corys. Um, and he has come out, of course, and said, you know, he's been he was touched and everything like that as a child actor um, by several directors and several actors and several people. Um, and he said he knows for a fact that uh, Corey Hames, the, the gentleman who passed away, uh, was also. Well, now he put out a trailer to this documentary and it's essentially just him sitting on a couch and whoever the guy is acting, asking the questions of him is like, hey, um, <laughs> have you heard the 911 call? And I'm assuming of the death of, of, of the other Corey. Mm-hmm. And he has on the phone and then it starts flashing a bunch of uh, old footage of him in the old movies and writing of like, you know, do you think you know my story and all that jazz? And then uh, he's like struggling to hit the play button on the phone. He's like, I'm going to let, because the guy's like, I'm going to let you hit play. And then he finally hits play, listen to it. And it just ends with all this is like in a minute and 30 <laughs> seconds. And it just ends with him, uh, a tear scrolling down his eye. And then the title sequence going, I, I got to tell you, it's a shitty trailer. <laughs> I shouldn't say that because of the subject matter is very serious, but it's a poor, poor trailer. And it makes it look like he's once again pandering and wanting publicity. That's all. I have not seen this one. No, I definitely want to watch it just so I can. I mean, it's one of those things like, do I want to turn away? But I can't. Yeah. Type situations. But yeah, it is. That's, that's a tough one because I love the Corys back in the 80s. And once again, and I am in no way making fun of the subject matter. I just mm-hmm. think that the trailer is, it's very, look at me, look at me. So, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel what you're saying. The only thing I would, the only thing I would, even though I probably shouldn't add, is I, w- I wish he would have just concentrated on himself and not the other Corey yeah. who's passed. He should have yeah. just spoke for himself and not somebody else. But that's just my personal feelings on the matter. Anywho, I should have gone first because that's a depressor right there. <laughs> uh, well, my trailer, it starts out, it's called Horse Girl. It's a, it's a Netflix movie. You can watch it right now if you want to. Um, it starts out, it's the sweetest little girl, like, well, not little girl, she's a woman. Sweetest woman ever. She's young. She's just like, she's a little awkward, but she's just the nicest thing ever. And like, how can you, how can anything bad or, or anything happen to this person? Cause she just seems so sweet, awkward as all get out, but, but still sweet. And she, and it starts off, you're thinking this is just some little romance movie because she meets a guy and, you know, I like you, you know, I like you, I like your shirt, I like your dress, blah, blah, blah. And it just turns into this little, you know, sweetheart, you know, sweethearted thing. And I'm like, okay, he's Valentine's is coming up. Why not? So I'm like, okay, then whatever. But then it turns, it goes a different direction. And this is why I like the trailer. Because then it goes into this, uh, you know, she's like, somebody asked her if she's all right. And she's like, you know, I don't know if I am or not. And then it goes into this, you know, I've been waking up in strange places. I just, you know, all of a sudden I wake up. I don't know how I got there. I'm just in weird places. I'm like, okay, now I'm intrigued, you know? And then it goes into, do you believe in like alien abductions? I'm like, oh, this is an alien movie. And can't, you know, I'm all for it, you know, all for it. And then it goes somewhere else. And then it goes into like, I can hear the future. Cause like, there's a scene where she hears, uh, somebody say something before they say it. So there's all this weird stuff happening. It makes like no sense. And I love weird movies. So the trailer just grabbed me right off the bat. And then, yeah, I can't wait to watch this one. It, it seems like it's going to be hopefully a lot of fun. And I can't just wait to find out what the whole thing is about because it starts off sweet and innocent and it ends up crazy and insane. So I'm all for that. Yeah. And she's a very talented actress from her days on community and then of uh, course on glow, which is also a Netflix show. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this one as well. The trailer does look damn good. Oh man! Well, watch fun is there. Uh, <laughs> I guess that goes into Birds of Prey. I'll just call it Birds of Prey, just not to confuse Watch Fun. I'll watch Fun if you wouldn't have mine. Join the boys as they discuss Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey, or is it Birds of Prey, and the fantabulous emancipation of one. Oh, who gives a fuck?
It's open season on Harley Quinn when her explosive breakup with the Joker puts a big fat target on her back. Unprotected and on the run, Quinn faces the wrath of narcissistic crime boss Black Mask, his right-hand man, Victor's sass, and every other thug in the city. But things soon even out for Harley when she becomes unexpected allies with three deadly women, Huntress, Black Canary and Renee Montoya. Thank you. Watch Fox. Oh, he was confused anyway. He, he just gave up on that title. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, Birds of Prey. Sorry, Miss Margot Robbie. Um, and okay, what I'm going to take from the others in this Miss Rosie Perez makes a comeback. Mary Elizabeth Weinstein, Whitestead, uh, Journey Bell. Ewan McGregor, um, Ella Basco. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, uh, before I get into anything on this else on this film, I will say this: Zaz was wasted. Uh, Zaz, Zaz he, he he's such a horrible, horrible person in the comic books. Like he he's this maniacal like vicious, sadistic, sick son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. And he's just like an errand boy who was literally told to go fetch in this movie. <laughs> so, just gonna throw that out there. But, uh, let's get things started. Sir, what are your initial thoughts on this one? You know what? Um, I didn't... Suicide Squad was okay. It was good, yeah. but it wasn't great. Yeah. Uh, and then there's Harley. I know she was a standout character because I think I think it was made. Was it looks? Was it because she was doing kind of a, like a like a, a human yeah like a human cartoon like a human cartoon version of like you know Harley Quinn mm. like her interpretation of that? I don't know, but this this isn't my favorite movie in the world. Yeah. Like yeah. it's a, it's okay. Uh-huh. Like you know it kind of in the beginning it sort of reminded me of like an updated version of Tank Girl in a way, and and I got and. <laughs> And her voice, like I just found, this is this is bad. Like I don't, I don't want to be mean, but I just don't like. And it, even though it sounds like that, kind of in the cartoon, I think the cartoon is better. Just like with the she's Joker. more New Yorkish in the cartoon. Yeah, I, I just think it's better in the cartoon for some reason. And when I see some, when I feel like someone's trying to do like a version of the cartoon, for me it just doesn't. Like I'm, I'm so I, I favor the cartoon, so I'm, I'm biased that way. Yeah. And it just, it, I found, I found the no, like her voice annoying. <laughs> most of the time so that's a problem that I had throughout the movie and then also I, I just like that I'm throwing all this out there is that they did I don't mind the whole Venom thing where they, you take the villain you make it a hero it's like an anti-hero whatever yeah. they did that with her spoilers and I just don't really feel like that's the best route for her it made the end of the movie for me unsatisfying I wanted more Mm-hmm. I wanted something. I wanted something other than that little uh, happy spoilers, uh, happy ending. So <laughs> that's my initial reaction to the movie. Saying that there are some good things in it. I did enjoy. I did. I was glued to the screen. I wanted to see what was going to happen. Yeah. I was more interested in the the finding out how all the women were going to come together and work together. But there are some other problems in it for me. But overall, I would say it's okay. But I'm not saying this is great. I. I agree on a lot of those things. Um, my main issue is, and I'm all about uh, that a woman can kick ass. Yeah. A woman can. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna, so don't take anything I say as that. <laughs> um, I was going to mention something along that lines too, but go ahead. Yeah. Well, let me take the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> um, she needs the Joker. Uh, she needs she needs something. I think as proven in this movie, they gave her other people, but um, because yeah, as she pointed out, lots of times in the movie, she has a PhD. She's you know she's smart, blah blah blah, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I don't know, man. Like what it what, like whose choice was it? So like he could have even made a cameo, like even if it was the little Joker. And I know they're right now reworking things over there. They're trying to figure out uh, who has what, you know. Mm. <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Uh, but I mean, clearly, it's, this movie is connected to the Suicide Squad universe. So you could have used him in some way, shape, or form, unless he was busy. I don't know. Um, just even if it was just like little glimpses here and there. Um, and that's not to say she's not good at what she does, because she is, but <sighs> the first. 40 ish minutes of the movie is her trying to prove that she doesn't need the Joker, which, in my opinion, she kind of does. She almost got abducted. She was, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> just, just kind of blindly doing shit. And I don't know. That's my they're, they're, <laughs> they're, peanut, they're peanut butter and jelly. They're good by themselves, but together they're perfect. Yeah. So I don't know. But the point that I wanted to make more nuts was more along the lines of the the women kicking butt mm-hmm. yes women can kick butt there's yes. i mean we we watched we watched some ufc fights together with women are just you know okay. um, they, i think those fights are better than the guy fights yes they seem to they have more heart than some of the dudes mm-hmm. but the choreography in this movie seemed overly choreographed if that makes sense uh, like, it looks bad to me yeah, it didn't like some of the scenes were cool. Like when she like bounces the bat off the floor, hits the guy, and then catches it in slow mo. Mm-hmm. Sure, I'm all, I'm all for that. I watch. I like the Matrix. I like slow motion. I mean, <laughs> I still I'm still a sucker for it. But when you when like 50 dudes, you know, attack three women with guns. Yeah, and then it's like there's not a scratch on the women, and like all the all 50 dudes are just like all laid out, and it's obvious that the that they when it's when it's it's so choreographed that the guy runs up like he's gonna swing but he doesn't because he's too busy like making this little action pose right before he gets hit and then falls <laughs> over and then another guy comes up and then does the exact same thing nobody's swinging at him yeah they get hit a couple of times like she gets kicked through a door car door and that was awesome but nobody really gets up right after that and then just you know yeah. continues on unless they're superhuman and she's just a regular. <laughs> person i think they should have there should have been some blood coming out of her mouth or something showing how actually tough she was as opposed to making it cartoony yeah i felt like uh, the i felt like they made it too cartoony and they should have made it more realistic especially if they if you know with the rating they could have, they could have right? yeah, so they could. why why not go all the way why not push that envelope that, i think that rating was just so they could throw in the bad words Mm-hmm. And my problem with that is a lot of it, especially early on, just felt forced, just like they were felt like they were doing it just to do it. Um, and I could be completely wrong there, but and I and I get it. They're in the, the worst city in all of Comicdom, you know, like it's it's a hellhole. But a lot of that cussing just kind of felt like, you know, we have a rated R, so better throw a fuck here, better throw a shit here, you know, better yeah. this person that. Um, and, and the fight scenes. Here's my problem with them. A lot of them felt very unnecessary. Like, we get into a massive uh, I'm gonna beat up all the cops in here somehow with a with bing bags and confetti to I'll go into this prison cell, which is one size, but then now the fight scene starts and it's massive and we're doing water taekwondo and, you know, we <laughs> get our beautiful water effects. I was like, are we, is, is this, this fight scene really necessary? We get it. She's a tough, she's a tough chick. We don't need, you know, I don't know. I was a little upset with, by the just gratuitous over the top fight after fight after fight after fight. Yeah, I wanted to see her use because I really liked the moments when she would psychoanalyze somebody really quick and then go yes. back to being goofy. I love that. I wish they could have played on that more mm-hmm. instead of the fighting. Like somehow she would trick somebody to do something, even though they, you know, they wouldn't know they were doing it, but she tricked them to doing it because she's that intelligent, even though she's goofy. That would have been great because that's that's you know I feel like in general that would be a better way to portray her as a, you know, I guess as a villain, even yeah. though she's supposed to be more of an anti-hero in this movie, which is my other, you know, complaint, but still, I think that's just a better way to portray her. I think that's, yeah, she likes to use that big mallet and shoot folks and use her, you know, her hyena or whatever, to, but I mean, why not use her? What, yeah. Why not use her brain? I mean, I think that's such a better tool. Bruce, Bruce was robbed. Yeah. <laughs> you should have took him out. Like, and he just sat in the, in the apartment, you know, just like, yeah. what? Um, uh, so we talked about Margot, uh, Miss Robbie, Miss Harley Quinn. Um, did, she did a fine job. She's, she's Harley Quinn. You know, she's seen as her now. 
Uh, there's nothing wrong with, in my opinion. There's nothing wrong with it. I, I agree the accent could be better, but the, uh, Rosa Perez making that comeback. To, she's the ladies and icon in cinema. What do you think of her? She she is, but again, here I go putting my foot in my mouth and making people mad. I felt like her acting was a little weak. Wow. I felt like there were some scenes like I I just don't feel like she, it's almost like she didn't care. Mm-hmm. And a couple of them, that was, I mean, I, I don't want to point them out, but it just seemed like some of the scenes, like, especially when she had the shirt on, she's like, I saved my balls for this or whatever. Yeah. And then she was like, somebody was talking to her and she said something as they were walking down the hallway. It just seemed like that. That's not, I don't know. It just didn't feel good. It felt like she was just kind of half assing it. That whole scene felt like a reach to me. Like, I don't know if they were trying to, <sighs> I don't want to bring up another rated R superhero who, you know, goes over the top, but does it on purpose because he's insanely crazy. But a lot of it felt like they were trying to out him, him. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, <laughs> I yeah. don't know if you got that at all, but yep. yeah. Yeah. So no, no, I mean, I think she did okay, but I don't feel like, she, I mean, for the quality of the movie that they're attempting to make, I don't think, Maybe she was the best choice. I don't know. Because I felt like some of her, her acting was weak. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I, I mean, and that's the and, I'm, and I'm wanting to talk because I can't act at all. But still, <laughs> I mean, I can recognize it when I see it. But we're here to talk about it. That's what we're here for. Um, yeah, I don't want to have my mouth Miss Perez. But yeah, I see what you mean, 100%. My, my, my biggest problem with that scene, we see hardly, with, not with that scene, but with her and Harley, um, scenes together. The first time they, the second time they run into each other, we see Harley beat the crap out of all of these armed men, uh, copious amounts of them <laughs> um, throughout the entire movie. But then she meets up later on with a drunk Rosie Perez and basically gets her ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were pretty even. They were pretty evenly matched. Is she a mask of drunk food? <laughs> Apparently, yeah. <laughs> Little Rock Lee action in there. <laughs> but uh, the Huntress. Loved her. I, I, Absolutely especially loved towards her. The end. I love that. I love that scene in the beginning when they go into that. Was it a restaurant and she kills those guys? Mm-hmm. Like that was awesome. I mean, they wish that we could have gotten more of that from her, but that was pretty much it. And then we just got a lot of her on a bike. And then occasionally <laughs> shooting a bow. Mysterious. She did have the one scene. Where... She really shined at the end when they, you know, when she can never get her name right. Mm-hmm. And I like the, I like the humor, the humor along with it, with her. I thought it was great because she was so straight faced or angry mm-hmm. that it just worked. And I think she did a good job. She was a good in Gemini man too. So I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with what she's been doing. Yeah. I hope to see her in some more stuff because I like her. But I, I feel for as far as the, the females go, I feel like she was my favorite. Yes, uh, Black Canary. I thought she she was the only one with superpowers. What's that? Screeching or superpower? Yeah, so had some kind of a <laughs> some kind of a screech. She only used it once though to break glass when she was singing. I know. I guess because she faints after she does it. Apparently, I don't know if that's true in the comic book, but she definitely did in the movie. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, but it would have saved their ass a lot. I know. I know they're probably like, "Couldn't you have started with that? It would have been yeah. so much easier." <laughs> we carry you out of here, you know. <laughs> Um, well, the man who needs no introduction, um, Obi-Wan Kenobi himself. <laughs> Look, you I, 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 I gotta say, he, I enjoyed his performance. Yeah. He was, uh, I feel like he was funnier than, than Harley Quinn. Yeah. Just more enjoyable to watch than Harley Quinn. I don't know. Their heads are a thousand years old. Ew, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, that scene when he's walking Black Canary around his place, it was just the greatest thing ever. I don't know why. Oh man, and I it, I got the 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 feels the same feels that I did with William Defoe back in uh, Boondock Saints. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, very, yeah, 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 very similar. <laughs> like, I see it, what you're saying. Yeah, but yeah, it it was good. It's good. Stuff. And he and he was able to turn on the evil too, like super quick. Like he became that that whiny evil person you don't want to mess with. Yeah, and it was believable. You know, it didn't seem like. He was necessarily acting. It just felt like a, a genuine performance. So I thought that was, I think he did a great job. I got to give it to him. Yeah. Um, the little pickpocket, Cassandra. 
Basco, put some Basco sauce on your tacos. <laughs> <laughs> I, I liked her. She was okay. I mean, yeah, I thought she not, was not, not, you know, not over the top crazy, but mm-hmm. decent. I mean, she did a good job. She showed some range there, a little emotion. And she was very yeah, believable could, as a little, little pickpocket. Um, yep. Untrustworthy. It was still, but still trying to learn the ropes from anybody who would give her the proper ropes. Oh, I really enjoyed that. Yep. Um, genuine, genuine performance. And I'll let, let you take Victor's eyes because I was very disappointed uh, at what they did with him. Yeah, not, I, not like, like I said, I wasn't familiar with the character from the comic, but hearing that, I, I see what you're saying. I thought he did okay. He seemed just kind of like, like you said, an errand boy. He was a. Uh, you know, he wanted to impress the boss and be number two, I guess, or number one, however you want to think about it. And yeah, I mean, I enjoyed the face cutting off scenes. That was kind of wicked. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, I don't, I don't see him being that. Yeah, that but because uh, like most of those is. scars on him are children. Mm-hmm. Uh, if that, that's all I'll say on that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he's he's a sick, sick, sadistic. I think, I think they, even though they went rated R, I guess they wanted to tone it down a bit to make it more palatable. Because I mean, I, I think most of the people who are probably fans of this Harley Quinn are younger, younger women. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, pro- or girls are probably thirteen. Uh, yeah. You know, Twenty-ish. I don't know. But I, I just, I, but I think once again, I think that's what hurt the, the film a lot. Um, I think they could have threw in like, what is it? You get one fuck, one middle finger, uh, and. Uh, three or four shits to get a PG-13. They, mm-hmm. they could have done that. They could have got away with that and still got that massive crowd who are fans of Harley Quinn, which I think, like you said, are younger women slash girls. I would say uh, 12 to 13 and up, you know? <laughs> like mm-hmm. You missed out on that that lump sum. Not to say that that's all going all gonna to see, because like, like I said, I, I enjoyed what I saw, but you, I think that was a lot of their, their money woes right there. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah. Um, overall story, what do you think, sir? Um, I kind of like what they did in the beginning, jumping back and forth. Mm-hmm. I guess that was interesting. I mean, I've seen it before, so it wasn't like the, you know the first time I've seen it, and they just wowed me with it. But it was okay. It kept me interested, you know, long enough to get through it. Uh, uh, the, like I said, I don't like the end. I don't like that. I'm fine with some like an antihero. I do like that idea. I do like antiheroes, but I just feel like she should be evil. She's the villain. She's. Yeah. She, I know. I know she's human. And then there's the possibility for redemption and all that crap. She wasn't always bad, but or still. Robert. She became a merc, <laughs> like uh, the other guy that we won't mention is, is the merc with the mouth. But I'm sorry, go on. <laughs> but I mean, it's I don't know. I just I just didn't like where it went because it felt like a too too good of a feel good movie by the end, and I didn't want that out of out of something that's supposed to be like DC and Harley Quinn, maybe a little bit darker. I was hoping for something like the opposite of like what I got from Wonder Woman. Yeah, you know what I mean, okay. it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that, you know, I got that feel good romantic, mm-hmm. yeah, type thing. But I wanted the opposite from her because she's not Wonder Woman; she's she's Harley Quinn. So I wanted a Harley Quinn movie, not what we got. I felt like they didn't give her anything to do. It she was, was like a chicken running around with her head cut off. She didn't really know. She wanted to get everybody, stop everybody from hurting her. Yet she wanted to start her own career because she's a strong woman who don't need no man. But and, and and she, you know, and then she what wanted to actually join the team now because they were all cool and awesome. But at the same time, I don't know, man. Like it, it was she wanted to be a good person. Then she wanted to. This is this is all the thoughts that are going to my brain while I'm watching. It's like, what the fuck is she supposed to be doing during this mm-hmm. movie? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I would have preferred her just be bad and, and throughout the, and just screw everybody in the end. That would have been mm-hmm. more, you know, to my taste, I guess. That was the one part, uh, spoilers, I did like about the end was like she stole the carnival off and let them mm-hmm. become the birds of prey. Uh, but so what was the moral of the story, though? When you break up with your boyfriend, adopt a girl and you're fine? I mean, I don't understand what... Uh... Get, I got, here's my more more of this story. <laughs> when I up with my boyfriend, <laughs> which isn't gonna happen because I'm single, ladies. Hi. But, <laughs> um, I I gotta first break something very valuable that reminds me of him. Mm-hmm. Um, then do a bunch of coke. <laughs> 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 
oh wait, no, I forgot. Get shit faced drunk, then uh, almost get abducted, um, then kind of you know work on myself and try to figure out what I want to do in life, even if that means betraying everything I hold dear and trust and want to be different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm just messing around here. I don't know. You know, I don't know <laughs> where all this was. Uh, I'm a little lost. But uh, I'm, I'm sure it's all about empowerment and you don't have to be with somebody and you don't need no man because we're the birds of prey and, and all that kind of stuff. I get that. And that's awesome. That's cool. But man, I wish I wish the movie had ended differently on a, for me on a stronger note. Yeah, I, I feel like I felt like it was too. Uh, I don't want to say Disney, uh-oh. but that, yeah, but that not, word that's a, that's a <laughs> it's just just popped into my head like just a little Disney moment. Everybody at the end smiling and so happy. funny because that's not what they wanted at all. Yeah, Bambi because comes from around the corner and winks at him, and it's just that's too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> don't call me soft. You know, that's what um, yeah, I. Uh, <sighs> what do Rotten Tomatoes think about this? And let's check the they, they the... just love it. Um, both fans and critics. Oh yes, yeah, they love 79% it. Seventy-nine percent tomato meter, and that's a uh, three hundred nineteen critics. So that's certified fresh. Um, audience score eighty percent out of eight thousand people. Um, well, decent, those are decent numbers. I mean, I can't argue with. Numbers. I can't argue with those numbers just because I'm disgruntled about the movie. But I mean, I mean, like I said I didn't hate it. I did not. No, I, like I said, I was like I was like my eyes were glued. I didn't, I didn't get bored. Yeah. Not at all. I, I I wanted to see what was going to happen, but just I kept seeing these things like this forced choreograph, you know, mm. fight, and then this you know voice that just wouldn't quit. I was so glad when somebody else came on the screen and <laughs> just I mean just all these little things just. But I kept watching because I wanted to see what was going to happen. And then what happened, I was just a letdown. So I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I was um, just, I was, I was hoping for another movie. I, <laughs> I can see that. Um, uh, oh, IMDb did change the name as well. Rotten Tomatoes did not, but IMDb did. Uh, they gave it a 6.7. So out of 10. Yeah, it's not a bad movie. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's not great. All right. Uh, which brings us to us. Go watch or not for you, sir. That's a tough one. Like I said, I was glued. I mean, I watched the whole thing. And then yeah. I wasn't like other than the disappointment at the end and the annoying voice and the stuff about it I didn't like. I mean, I'd watch it again. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, go watch. Would you watch it in sequence with Suicide Squad? I, I would I would do a little, <laughs> a little try a little double double feature there. Uh, I would say, which I think we're going to see this Harley again in James Gunn's Suicide Squad. Actually, I know we are. Um, so be ready for that. May see a different Joker. But um, um, I would say all you young Harley fan, fans, Harley Quinn fans out there, get your parents or big sisters or something to sneak you into a theater and go watch this for sure. Um why not? You know, check it out. It's it's not a bad movie. It's very fun. Um, like I said, I felt some things were forced, but I enjoyed a lot. I enjoyed more than I hated. So there you go. Go watch it from me as well. Ah, what a confusing, mixed up episode. I don't even know what to call that movie we just watched. But um, where you can find us, you can find us at GoWatchMovie.com. Um, the trailers will be up there. The news stories covered today will be up there. The podcast is there. The podcast is also on iTunes, Spotify, Spreaker, um, anywhere a podcast can be found. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can find us on there as well. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell us what you hate. Tell us what you love. You did. You like this more than us, and we should shut the fuck up. You tell us that too. We'll take it. Uh, let's. That's episode 122, The Birds of Prey, the fabulous tabulous emancipation <laughs> of Robert and Kelvin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Kelvin. And I'm Robert. Go watch a movie. When the rhythm starts.